So one of the things that was just recently released was Dali E3. Now Dali E3, if you don't know, is similar to Dali 2. It's essentially image generation software, quite like Midjourney, but this one is a bit different. You see, OpenAI actually did something that I didn't predict they were going to do. And what they were able to do was they were able to add text. As you can see on screen, it says Larry is so cute. What makes him super duper? So essentially they've integrated this, you know, chatbot with Dali 3, which is of course an image generation software. So you can see they're able to design some stickers. They're able to, you know, talk about many different things. And I think this is probably GPT 4.5. And you might be wondering why are you saying that this is GPT 4.5? Because previously we did talk about how chat GPT as it's going to get incrementally upgraded, more things are going to be released. And we know that it is going to be more multimodal than it is going to be anything else. So of course, this is technically Dali 3, but it's also an upgrade to chat GPT. So of course, everyone's wondering when is GPT 5, yada, yada, yada. It seems like we're getting these updates to chat GPT that are essentially becoming, you know, slowly and surely um, towards GPT-5. So this is a major update for ChatGPT because um, something like this is really cool because you can now actually talk with the text and, you know, ChatGPT can now give you an image. And of course, we do know that this isn't exactly like the previous image capabilities where you can analyze images, but in order to create these images quite like Midjourney, this is really, really cool. Now, we aren't sure how good this is compared to Midjourney in terms of the realism, but we do know that in terms of, you know, stickers and, you know, um, various artistic things that this is pretty, pretty good. So we don't know when this is going be released i think OpenAI did say that it's going to be released sometime in september but it will be really really interesting to see how this does work so if you did want to see some comparisons between chat gbt and of course mid journey in terms of dali 3 versus mid journey the top one that we can see here this is of course mid journey and the bottom one that we can see no 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 top one is actually dali 3 and of course the bottom one right here is of course mid journey now this one you're supposed to have like a heart with a universe inside of it um with clouds coming from the sky and i do think that this one that they've shown us does actually beat mid journey in this area but once again i do think that what we're starting to see from certain image generations is that certain image generations are best at certain styles i don't think there's one image generation that is best at all styles even in mid journey you have to use v4 for more artistic and v5 for more realistic and version 5.2 for more realistic and I guess artistic combined together. For example, this is an example of um, some leaves dressed up as dancers or amphithermorphic leaves um, as some country folklore singers. And this is Dali, which looks pretty good. And then of course, this is Mid Journey. But like I said before, I'm not sure which engine the person did use in Mid Journey. So I can't really judge that. But this is why I'm saying various different softwares um, depending on which version is released, they're going to generate a different specific result. And then of course we have this one right here, which is a close up of a hermit crab nestled in wet sand. And the top is of course Dali 3 and the bottom is of course Mid Journey. Like we said, Mid Journey does look more realistic, um, like insanely realistic. I would believe this is a real picture. Um, and then this one of course also does look, look, look realistic as well. But I do want to say that this is actually a hermit crab and this is actually just a normal crab. So, I mean, it's up to you which one you think is better. I'd love to know your thoughts down in the comment section below, but um, let's move. Now this was something I did want to talk about last week, but the video was like 28 minutes. So we just didn't have time to put it in but this is next gpt any to any multimodal llm and this is and this is generally where i think gpt5 and all these other large language models are going to go i know that many different people in the industry are thinking that you know we're going to decide one large language model that can do absolutely everything and maybe that's going to be possible but i like to think that what we can see here with next gpt um, a multi any to any multimodal LM like previously like Microsoft's Jarvis and other systems is that this is much more realistic. So I think what we're going to have is one large language model in the middle. And then this large language model is going to call on every single other large language model for the specific request. So for example, when it needs to generate an image, it's going to use mid journey or maybe Dali three. When it needs text, it's going to use chat GPT. When it needs to do audio, it's going to pull on the 11 labs API. Um, and when it needs vision, it's going to pull on the best vision generator out there. And I think with all that combined, that's going to be more like an AGI rather than doing one AI that can do absolutely everything. I mean, I think it's going to be similar to how the human body works, where you have the brain that pulls on, you know, the nose for smelling, you know, the tongue for tasting, the eyes for seeing. Um, rather than the brain just absolutely doing everything. So I think it's going to be kind of like a body. Um, and this was a paper. So, you know, it says, as we humans always perceive the world and communicate with people through various modalities, developing an any to any large language model capable of accepting and delivering content becomes essential to human level AI. So I think that is going to be very interesting because it can do any to any. Um, which is even video. So I think that's where things are going to go. 
Um, and it will be interesting to see how that does work. But I think that this is where these large language model systems are going to go. And even when we just before saw how ChatGPT is already using DALI 3, I think that is exactly where we are headed. So if you're wondering what the future of AI is going to look like, this is a, a good show. This is another thing I did want to include as well. This is called MV Dream Multi-View Diffusion for 3D Generation. This is really, really good. I mean, I've seen tons of different 3D model generations. Um, and this is really, really good. Like it's approaching that level of detail where you can actually use this stuff right now. You can see Viking Axe Fantasy Weapon AK Blender. Um, and this is just a text to 3D prompt. So, I mean, look at this. I mean, Gandalf smiling, white hair examples. I mean, this is really, really good. Like before you would see a lot of stuff as of course, like right here, this is where you're seeing every other project and all of the examples. I mean, you can see how it looks, you know, this one's blurry, this one's, that one's not too bad, but these ones aren't as good. And of course you can see they've managed to fix um, various issues and various quality issues. Um, and yeah, this is really, really promising because when you compare it and you see the level of detail on this one, um, it just goes to show that with 3D, like I feel like every week we're getting increases. And here's the thing that someone previously said on Reddit, I'm, I'm not sure what the post is, but what they did say is that sometimes what people are looking for is one major breakthrough. And of course that does happen, but sometimes all of these smaller breakthroughs on the smaller level allow us to create that much more smoother transition into whatever it is that we might be moving towards. So of course you can see right here that 3D is getting maybe 10% better, you know, every now and again, or like 10% better every month. You know, eventually you can have something that's crazy. Remember mid journey every month, it got better and better. And eventually now we have something that is pretty crazy. So this is crazy. Like Jack Sparrow wearing sunglasses, boom, a 3D model. Um, and that's pretty crazy for me. So, um, yeah, I, th I think this is uh, really, really cool. I think it's very, very interesting. Um, and it was something that I wanted to put out there. I'm pretty sure there is a GitHub page that you can use or a hugging face spot, but this shows promising, promising results because once this is perfected, guys, it's really going to change the entire. Then, of course, you can see right here, tech tycoons combined with a net worth of roughly 550 billion gathered in the same room today for a Senate, for a Senate forum on the future and regulation of AI from Bloomberg. So here you can see all of the people who are uh, leaders and pioneers in the AI space that pretty much, you know, own the decision on where this stuff is going to move are discussing AI. Now, what was interesting was one of the conversations that they had now the conversation wasn't that great but there was something that i did want to pick up on because i don't think enough people are paying attention to this and i think once again it shows that we are right now in a race to the bottom. so you can see right here according to the washington post one of the 22 tech titans at that senate meeting tristan harris of the center for humane technology told the room that with 800 dollars and a few of work and a few hours of work his team were able to strip meta safety controls of its open source large language model llama 2 and that AI responded to prompts with instructions to develop a biological weapon. Now, you have to understand that uh, this is a problem because, of course, Meta chief Mark Zuckerberg reportedly replied that those instructions are available on the internet. So this is an example of AI doing sophisticated research. Fair enough. But like we stated, this is just the beginning. So remember, okay, um, this is pretty crazy, okay? Because, of course, as they state, DeepMind was able to develop AlphaFold, which is pretty, pretty crazy. That that solved a lot of um stuff that would have taken us years to solve. So the, the point here is that, of course, right now, these AI systems aren't great. I mean, they're great, but they aren't great to the point where they can develop completely new biological agents. But the point is, is that if they're able to do that, you know, five, 10 years from now, that is going to be crazy because if we have open source tools, which anyone can access, of course, this is good that anyone can access it, but that of course opens it up to bad actors. Maybe someone wants to develop something that could ruin a whole town, ruin parts of the world. I mean, it's definitely something that we need to be careful of because if we don't have safeguards and we don't have regulations, then this kind of stuff is going to fall into the wrong hands. And of course, you know, they, they, they equate this to being some of a nuclear bomb and giving a nuclear bomb to everyone on the planet is a recipe for disaster because it only takes one person to set it off and we know that with 8 billion people there's definitely at least a few of those who are crazy enough to just do something just to see how it goes so it is definitely something that shows that although open source AI models are good I don't think that the best because the risk of people using them to you know create fraud and just do many different things it's just too much, but it'll be interesting to know what you guys think if these open source AI models should still be allowed or if you think that the risk bad actors is just. So then what we have here is something that is very interesting. I'm glad that this is now starting to get more recognition. This is called autonomous driving with chain of thought, autopilot thinking out loud in text. It says lingo one is the most interesting work I've read in auto driving for a while before perception, then driving action, then after perception, textual reasoning, and then action. So, so if you don't know what chain of thought prompting is, it's essentially where you ask a large language model, uh, a question. Okay. So for example, let's say I asked ChatGPT, what's two plus two. Um, it might just say back four, but let's say I asked it what's two plus two. And then I say, let's think step by step and show your reasoning and explain your reasoning before you give me your answer. 
then it's going to say 2 plus 2 is 4 because when you add 2 and then you add 2 it's going to be 4 and of course it's meant for more complex questions but they're now applying this to I guess you could say driving so it says lingo one trains a video language model that comments on the ongoing scene and then you can ask it to explain its decisions as to why you stopped planning and what are you going to do next and of course it shows you okay why it's made these decisions so um, at the start we can see here it says I'm edging due to the slow music moving traffic and then of course um, as you move on it says I'm overtaking a vehicle that's parked on the side so I think this is interesting because it gives us an insight as to how these large language models are making their decisions I'm accelerating now since the road is clear I'm remaining stationary as the lead vehicle is also stopped um, and I think this might be it might be a breakthrough I'm not too sure but um, I think Elon Musk did make a comment on this because he did talk about LLMs but yeah I can't I can't I can't find the actual tweet from Elon Musk where he does talk about LLMs but I do think that this is going to be interesting to see if this is uh, more successful than other decisions. Of course contextual reasoning as we know does improve a model's response by around you know 20 to 30 percent or in some cases even five times so it will be interesting to see how it now what's also very very interesting as well is that Elon Musk actually said something literally an hour ago that means he has inside information about mid -journey. so he said okay that mid journey will be releasing something significant soon okay and this was in response to a tweet where it was talked about Dali 3 once deployed will improve at a faster rate than mid-journey. And then Elon Musk says mid-journey will be releasing something significant soon. So that means, of course, Elon Musk has insider information about what's going on at mid-journey. And it's no surprise. I mean, if I work there, I'd... but I'm trying to think what exactly is mid-journey releasing? Is it going to be finally 3D? Because apparently that's what they're working on. Or is it going to finally be the desktop browser slash area that they were working on that was leaked? I was leaked and I was and I did see it. I do have the screenshot to show you because um, they don't want anyone to see that stuff and i'm guessing they're just waiting competition and they want to be the first debut that kind of stuff now there's a tweet here that does say according to david holes mid journey v6 will be a bigger jump from water v5 with better image quality and text prompting and mid journey 3d should come out in the next six months now if you want to know what 3d might look like we do have an image trailer from this account nick floats now i'm not sure if he made this himself i'm pretty sure it was him because i didn't manage to find this else but this does look very interesting and this is possible because the software and technology does exist to do this already okay and i'm not surprised if this does actually happen with mid journey because like we stated before being able to do this i know looking at crime scenes as we discussed before like a snapshot of a crime scene or something like that that would be pretty interesting for detectives or managing to do real estate or you know try to virtually explore an environment figure out where you're going to be where you play certain things i definitely think it's going to you know be that next level. then of course we have robofab introducing the world's first factory for humanoid robots and essentially this is pretty crazy because of course as you know humanoid robots are becoming more and more popular but this is a factory for the you know humanoid robots that are basically going to be everywhere and this is what they want so they're trying to reduce the cost of these automated robots and essentially what's even crazy about this as well so that i forgot to mention is that they're going to be using the robots to actually assist in the factory in which they're building robots so i guess you could say this is somewhat kind of exponential um, and very interesting because i didn't expect to see this you know technological advancement happening so quickly so um these robots i'm definitely sure that these companies are going to be getting more funding and more crowdfunding because of course investors definitely want to benefit from this huge huge industry that is projected to have billions and billions of dollars will be worth trillion will be interesting to see how this does play out then essentially what we had was a surprise we had this platform youtube saying that they're going to release a bunch of new ai tools and it's going to be helping creators and anyone that does want to become a content platform. So it will be interesting to see exactly how this stuff does work, how it does change the entire platform in terms of content creation, if it's actually going to be good or if it's going to be just pretty bad. So it says AI images for shorts and stuff. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave some of the video in here so you guys can see exactly how it looks and how it works because this explanation is vastly better than mine. Yeah. Are you actually rolling? We're actually. Oh, we're rolling. Okay. We're rolling. Yeah, we're good to go. Well, let's go. Okay. So, YouTube just announced this whole new set of AI and editing tools that are going to revolutionize the platform, making creation easier and more fun for everybody. The aim is to unlock more creativity for more creators than ever before. The most exciting part to me is that what was announced is supposedly just the beginning. Let's get into it. Okay, first up, let's talk about Dream Screen, the new image and video generation experiment that's making its way to YouTube Shorts. Powered by amazing AI technology, Dream Screen lets you bring your imagination to life by simply typing in ideas as text prompts. It then generates super fun images and videos that you can use to set the scene. All right, let's see this in action. <laughs> I kinda don't wanna leave. 
that's nice. These new tools are expanding the boundaries of digital art, and that's not all. Meet YouTube Create. This is a new app that YouTube is building to make editing easier for everybody. And it's free of charge. It includes access to thousands of royalty-free tracks and sound effects, and you can automatically create captions for your video with just one tap. Cleo, Jade, are you not mind blown? I'm very excited about this in a genuine way. <laughs> Last but not least, and my personal favorite, there's a feature that lets you clean up and remove any background noise. I live in New York, that would be really helpful. The beta for YouTube Create is available first on Android to creators in select countries right now, so go and check it out. These announcements show that YouTube is really starting to transform the way that content is created, helping more creators make more content in more ways than ever before. They're shrinking the gap between our wildest ideas and what we can actually create. Until then, just keep making things. I'll see you on YouTube. So then of course we had Microsoft announce your Copilot, which is the Windows 11 update, and it's going to include most um pretty much just a ton of different ai updates including paint photos clip champ and more all to your windows pc and of course well they also talked about how was that bing is going to be adding support for the latest dali 3 model from OpenAI and deliver more personalized answers based on your search history and of course just essentially a whole update that just makes everything a lot better so it's going to be really interesting because of course microsoft is pushing this entire ai into the entire system now i do think that this is going to be interesting because of course as you know apple's operating software doesn't utilize any of this at all um and it seems like apple is currently being left behind in the ai races they haven't even spoke or even anticipated anything just yet so it will be interesting to see how microsoft manages to gain ground because of course things with ai do move a lot quickly and a lot quicker than people do expect and you can be left behind because of course internet explorer did actually catch google off guard now of course i would show you this entire video i probably might make a dedicated video on this but of course you can see bard can now connect your google apps and services so it says use bard alongside your google apps and services easily double check its response and access features in more places so what does this actually mean so you know how you have the google drive you have gmail you have youtube you can actually check and use google drive or i mean you can actually use bard to check your google drive to check your gmail to check your youtube to check google flights to check pretty much all your dog anything so this is like actually having a great personal assistant and this is really 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 cool because this is something that's more valuable than chat gpt because of course chat gpt is great but i mean you have personal one of the large problems with chat gpt is that if i need information i have to give it that information and it is pretty time consuming especially if you're using chat gpt to respond to email to do work with your business with your company having to constantly be ChatGPT, that new information, especially after updates, is very, very time consuming. This is where Bard comes in and it's already connected with Gmail. You know, it can already help you with shared conversations, just so much stuff. And it's really, really cool that now they have this, okay? And this is gonna be something that once again, like we said, is a step up so of course as you can see when you go into bard this is exactly in including bard extensions of course if you click next then you're going to see bard meets google workspace of course it has all of your stuff and of course it's really cool is that double check bard responses you can check how accurate bard's responses actually are so if you're not confident about bard or if bard's not confident about something you can click a button and it's going to show you how accurate that response really was so of course you can see right there it's giving you a lot more stuff and of course as you know it's now of course you can upload images so one of bard's new features i took a random picture of a car that i found on the internet and then i literally just said youtube this so if you don't know what it is you can say google this youtube this and then essentially it's going to give you like youtube videos that are about that so i think this is going to be really interesting to see what kinds of cars it chooses um and what kinds of things are linked in here so it's really really interesting and it also says YouTube video views will be stored in your YouTube history. And so, yeah, I think this is going to be used a lot more than people did expect. And then, of course, we have Amazon's Alexa voice. It's allowed to become a lot more natural and a lot more better and a lot more clearer. So this is going to be interesting because this is something that we did expect earlier on the year. We did Bedrock, which was a bunch of different foundation models to all of their different APIs and services. But this is, of course, to their lead product, which is, of course, Alexa, or as many of you may know, Amazon's Astro. So take a look at this clip because I think it showcases exactly what Amazon is doing. And of course, Amazon Alexa hasn't really had much of the spotlight since siri and other things like google have also but i think whatever company manages to get a home device that is really good first off the ground that is integrated with a large language model that it sounds natural is actually useful probably can make jokes and stuff like that is definitely going to take this next wave by storm